Bye, Daisy girl. We'll be back. Be good girl. What is going on, everyone? It's Kelly here, and we are packing up our stuff for our last day of tuna spear fishing, or if I should say, spear fishing off Mad Max. Uh, we're gonna go to the Coronados, I believe it's called, and hunt a different type of species other than bluefin tuna. And then later, if we get a call that the bluefin tuna are hot, go there. But this is our gorgeous Airbnb. The houses in San Diego are pretty cool, not gonna lie. Ooh, there's an airport up there. We've been listening to the plane the all night. All of our wetsuits are laid out. We definitely need to grab those. Oh, Daisy girl. Hi, honey. You wanted to say bye bye before we go spear fishing today? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sweet girl. CJ and Chris are draining the cooler because we do have two smaller blue fins and a yellow tail in the cooler. So there's a Navy base right over there. You can actually see the water from our Airbnb. And Chris just informed me that it's called a Reveille. Reveille, I can't get that word, Reveille. And it's the Navy base. They're putting up the American flag and they play this tune in the morning, every morning at eight o'clock. I learned something new today. Let me just double check we have everything. I think we just need our dive gear. We've got snacks. Our dive gear is pretty important. Yeah, it's already outside. All right, we got snacks. I think we are good to go. All right, we'll see you guys at the marina or the boat, not sure yet. Wish us luck. Apparently there was two little stingrays in the water there, but they were gone before I got there. Oh, it's a beautiful overcast day here in San Diego. It's pretty overcast pretty much the entire time we're here so far. Today is technically day three. Gabe and I have, let's see, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th, and fly out the 20th. So we have like four more full days here after today. It's pretty low tide as you can see. The water goes up the bank, probably about another 15 feet on high tide. Yep. Look at this big gun though. This thing pretty much broke my wrist yesterday. So on my right hand, my middle finger going up to my wrist is like, pretty sure it's sprained. <laughs> I don't know, I just, my wrists are weak when I go to pull this gun, it has so much kickback. It hurts so I'm gonna try to shoot a smaller gun today hope for the best but if there's a big blue fin I might just try to suck it up and shoot it anyway and sacrifice my finger and wrist so we'll see but I'm excited to dive the Coronados I think they said because we're gonna definitely see a lot more different species rock structure and maybe even kelp so that's super exciting coming from Florida to dive in some kelp. So, y'all will see it. There's also a lot more sailboats here than I thought there would be. I think a lot of people live on their boats here. Los Islas Coronado. Los Islas Coronado. <laughs> Coronado. Coronado. I am terrible. Coronado Islands. For real. I cannot speak anything other than English. It's very bad. I need to practice. But we just made it. It is insanely beautiful. 
Like, I was in a beanbag in the back of the boat, and this thing was in front of us, and I was like, holy smokes. Crazy beautiful. Look at all the foam. The water here, according to the temperature, like, scanner on the boat, is 65 degrees, which would be the coldest water that we've dove in yet. Uh, tuna spearing, the water was probably anywhere from like 68 to 71, which is normally on the warmer side over here for bluefin spearing. There's a couple boats out here fishing, there's a lot of birds. As you can see, all the white that's on the rock is actually bird poop. I was wearing these shorts when the shark bit me. Oh, hold on, I gotta put this in the video. <laughs> so as most of you guys know, I did get bit by a 8 foot lemon shark on the, my left arm. And my fellow here, Chris, is also got bit by a shark. And these are the shorts he was wearing when he got bit by a reef shark in the Bahamas. How cool is that? <laughs> I, so it's funny, the other day I was thinking to myself, because he got bit by the shark pretty recently, what, like a month ago? Yeah, three weeks ago. And when I went to the hospital, I was wearing a three mil wetsuit open cell and I couldn't just rip it off because my arm, you can't do that. So they had to cut my wetsuit off. And I, at that moment I was like, well, it was a brand new wetsuit. I wore it once and I'm like, just throw it away. And I kind of wish I would have kept the sleeve of it because I don't know, it's kind of cool. So, but I didn't and I kind of regret it. At least I have the scar to prove it though. <laughs> all right, we are going to get geared up. I'm kind of procrastinating a little bit because it's a little chilly. Look at all this foam. <sighs> all right, deep breaths. Let's get geared up and jump in the water. Okay, so we are officially in Mexico waters, actually. That just shows you how close San Diego, California really is to Mexico. I got my 48-inch coa roller here. This is the gun I use at home for pretty much every fish I shoot. What's the depth? 30, 30, 40-foot depth, which is perfectly in my range. So let's go see what's down there. I think it's cold. I missed the calico bass. What was it? I missed the calico bass.
Yep. That'll he's, make it. He's big enough. Sweet. That'll make it for sure. Yeah, you catch him with a frog or flipping? I can't even unhook him because my hands are so cold. Nice shot, too. Thanks. Great shot. Oh, man. oh, it feels like 61 here. He just said the water is 61 degrees. Oh, I can feel that. <laughs> No, you know what's down there? You know the the, the Midas cichlids? Yeah, I see the orange the, fish. It's the same thing as them. I almost shot one, but then see they said no. Uh, I see some smaller sheep head, like this big, nothing like yours. But yeah, I'm pretty numb, so I think I'm just gonna stay in the water. Once I get my gut back. Cole just shot. Gabe and I are taking a snack break. He's out there. He just came up and said, Woohoo! So we'll find out. Let me tell y'all something. When we're doing this, we always are looking for our buddies. You always want to know where each other's at. I will never get used to seeing. Oh, there's Kelly. Oh gosh, it's never mind. It's the sea lion. Cause they come up and they see you and they're like sticking their head all the water looking around like what is that and i'm over there thinking what the heck is that <laughs> such a neat experience yeah there are sea lions everywhere gabe said he had one come up to his face and like Whoa. open his mouth cj's over there in the surge trying to get him a big sheep head i saw a couple sea lions but they just kind of like swam in a distance they didn't come up to me or anything all right, Cole's coming toward the boat. Let's see what you got. Calico? Oh. Nice little sea bass. Or, uh, <laughs> it looks just bass. like a, a Calico. large mouth bass. If that's I exactly had to give like it a name, I would say bass too, but that's a that's a really good calico. Stoned him too. Good shot. 
Oh, was he swimming away from you or towards you? He was Wait, swimming away, away from you. at the last second, so I just let it fly. But stoned him. That Where's fish has definitely oh, got make a sure headache. That doesn't get in the motor. It literally looks like a largemouth bass. It's so funny. Look at that cool bronze color. There you go. Ooh, look at his little teeth. He's got some little razor blades. Hmm. Good job. You were in the water for about two minutes. <laughs> Thank you. It's rolling. I hope one stands right in front of her face. And that's how you dolphin dive. We are wrapping up our bluefin tuna spearfishing day three excursion here with the Mad Max out of San Diego. We're pulling out our reef fish out of the box. We just went spearfishing around these islands as you can tell in the video. We're getting a nice group photo and we're wrapping it up. We'll see you guys back on the mainland in California where we're gonna check back into our new Airbnb for the next few days, cook up some calico bass. See you there. All right, you guys, we are back from spearfishing. We're pretty much done spearfishing on this trip. So now it's time to flay all of our fish and cook it. No, this is not a largemouth bass. This is a calico bass here in San Diego, California. I've never even heard of these fish before I saw them in the water. And they, it's insane how much they resemble largemouth bass. And not only the largemouth bass, but there's also these other fish down there that look like kind of bluegills. Do you know what those are called, Austin? Uh, blue perch. For real? Yeah, blue perch. Yeah. Blue perch. So there's calico bass and blue perch. I wonder if some somewhere like long ago, hundreds of thousands of years ago, if they didn't evolve into the salt water. I have no idea. They're freakishly similar. Are we going to ignore the fact about the goldfish? Oh, well, we have those at home. They're kind of similar, like the cichlids. Yeah. But not in salt water. That is fish. true. You guys probably have damselfish over there. No, we, it's like a Midas cichlid. It's a Midas cichlid, but they're bright orange, just like that. Except our Midas at home have kind of a big bump on their head. And these ones were more like sleek. But yeah, that is crazy. There's a lot of fresh, freshwater looking fish over here in uh, California. Super excited to try one of these. We're over here at Austin's house right now. Austin, you have seen him in this video and my tuna video. He was a huge help on the boat. Honestly, this trip, we had an amazing crew of people. I just bought these knives and holy smokes, they're sharp. Like stupid sharp. I don't even have to put pressure on it. Holy white meat. Honestly, it's a little too overcast for these glasses right now. I feel like I can't see anything. Is that where you shot him? That's an exit wound. That's an, I think, I think this one's CJ's. CJ shot that one. CJ knifed it, I think. No, I, no, it came out the. That was CJ's oh. quick with the knife. We're not going <laughs> to deny it. That's true. He has a bit of a history, doesn't he? <laughs> no, this is. I think this is CJ's one because yeah, it looks like he shot it through here and it came out. If he knifed it right way. there, he's got a little bit of learning to do. <laughs> In the nose. <laughs> I feel like right now we need to show him a quick clip of him knifing my tuna, just like a three-second clip of how quick it happened. CJ knifing the tuna. Yeah. Hmm. All right. I wish I had a hair tie right now because like, playing fish without a hair tie is kind of a pain in the butt. Oh, 
this is a female. It just got deathly quiet out. Thankfully, it's good for the video. It's so better than uh, Mission Beach. Focusing on pulling. Now when I scan a fish, come over here. When I skin fish, I like to use a little bit of a bigger knife just because that's what I prefer. I always put it on the edge of the table because that way my I can keep the knife flat and my wrist isn't like hitting the table when I'm trying to keep the knife flat. Put it on the edge, I grab a little bit of the meat with my left hand and I pull more of the skin. Just barely move that knife. The skin is super thin. Kind of smells like a bass. Unless I'm smelling the grass. The bass smell like grass? Kinda, like hydrilla, because they live in the freshwater. Check that out. Super excited to try this. So I'm actually gonna cook this bass when Gabe and I check into our new Airbnb. But tonight, Gabe is cooking some tuna, actually sashimi some tuna, bluefin tuna that we speared. And Austin over here is going to do- Sheephead cook. fish cakes. Sheep had fish cakes on Blue Gabe's channel, so stay tuned for that and this calico bass. I gotta show them what the sheep's head looks like real quick. All right, Kelly, I'll give you credit. You can walk the walk. Look at this head. Look at that. So I'm just cleaning up here. I just finished flaying the other side of the fish. And I always like to check what's in the gut cavity because it's really cool. You never know what you're gonna find. You're either not gonna find anything, you're gonna find really decomposed, just like muck, or you might find something super cool. And I already pulled it out of the stomach because I'm like, what the heck is this? It was just like white and mucky. I can't put it back in the stomach, so it's already out of the stomach. That's an octopus. This is the, like underneath, there's the beak of the octopus. You can see some of the tentacles still, or the, um, the little suction cups, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tentacles. His head's gone. Let's eat it. Calamari? That's right. That's you, catch, you catch a lot of octopus around here. Right off right off here, I catch a lot. So with these bass, it's actually quite common to find octopus. I've found many times whole Garibaldi, those big bright orange fish. We'll find those. You'll find uh, keyhole limpets, which is a whole shell this big. And I don't know how they digest it, if they just spit it out. But these bass will eat a lot of things bigger than you would think. I mean, and their teeth, I mean, they ain't got much teeth. They got tiny little, like, pin, pin sharp teeth, but... I was not expecting an octopus. That's rad. Large mouth bass eating an octopus. That's hilarious. Wow, that was cool. Well, interesting fun fact of the day. Okay, so the fish is filleted. I went ahead and trimmed off most of the bloodline as you can see. Um, I've never technically eaten this fish in the frying pan like this. We had it at the restaurant that we went to. What's the restaurant's name called? Dick, I have no idea. It's some like it. Thai Japanese restaurant. It's a really confusing name. Um, but they kind of coated it in like like a batter and like a really sweet and spicy tangy sauce. So I didn't really get to taste like the flavor of the fish. It was like so, a bang bang shrimp dish, but for fish. But this calico bass, yes. So I'm just using some garlic powder. I'm gonna do a little bit on both sides. We also have a very special guest here. Matilda. Da -da -da. What's up guys? Blue Game and Kelly Young. <laughs> <laughs> she just did that what's up guys. That's <laughs> Kelly's <laughs> line. Oh, so mine is what's going on everybody. It's Kelly and then yours is what's up Gabe. So yeah, you sort of did a mix. Okay, thing. yeah, I, I knew what I was doing. <laughs> so Matilda is actually Blue Game and my manager for our YouTube channel. She helps us generate ad revenue for us and also any questions with companies and dealing with promotion deals. She does all of the work. She's helped me through some trying times <laughs> in life, I can tell you. <laughs> and she and then you like would oh man. I She's remember the, the most... first time that Gabe got like you got really just your fuses were burnt with one ad that you did. The and Gabe was so probably was just like, lighting um, me up. <laughs> I was, th that, I know which one it was, but I was dealing with something else that was stressful at the time too. I forget what ad that, oh, it was, I think it was Jackery. Yeah, but it was the sea deck situation too on the boat that I was dealing with simultaneously. Uh, gosh, was it? I thought it was before that. Mm-mm. All right, 
so we're gonna go ahead and lay this fish here. I have a weird feeling it's gonna taste like largemouth bass because it looks so much like a largemouth bass, but I don't know. Wait, there's a fish scale. No. I don't know. I remembered it, it tasting really good at the restaurant. It was. It. I didn't. I didn't like taste any type of like grassy, fishy taste at all. But it was coated in a lot of stuff. So. So you just tried this one, or uh, at the two restaurant? Days ago at oh, the restaurant. Right. Yeah. It's the, the restaurant. first time we've ever even seen a fish like this. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of. I've had it. Is it? Is it a California calico bass? Yes, there it's in California, but we technically shot this bass in Mexico on the Coronado, Coronado Island, which it's funny because here we can actually oh. go in Mexican waters and like go fishing. Because we were far enough offshore. Oh, because we're far enough offshore. Okay, that makes sense. Because back home in the Bahamas, like if you get caught in Bohemian waters without checking in in the Bahamas, toast. Oh, interesting. Matilda's just normally been like smuggling back and forth. She's never really. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> were you raised here in San Diego? Uh, I was born in Northern California. Like so. San Fran Northern? Yeah, so, San Fran. I've I been knew that Francisco. was what was wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there. Let's not go there. <laughs> I've been to San Francisco once for a seven hour layover. Okay. And I saw Alcatraz, which is kind of cool. Oh yes, I've been there. Um, and then the wharf, Fisherman's Wharf, uh -huh. I walked yep. around. And Pier 66 or something like that, they had a bunch of seals. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, just the water part of. <laughs> yes, yeah, pretty much. And then I had to catch a flight to Hawaii. It smells good. It does, it smells really good. Holy moly, I turned on the wrong eye back there. What? Hold on, while you're doing that, I'm gonna show them the sunset real quick, because I think it's happening. Nope, we missed it. Oh, Never mind, it. we all missed be... this. Uh, good thing you filmed it last night. Yeah, so we, this trip has been pretty long. Um, we went hardcore the first three days, spearfish, bluefin tuna, spearfish carnados, as you can see this, this fish right here on the pan. Um, and then we had like four days to kind of just like relax, chill. We had to switch Airbnbs um, after the three days. Well, I kind of made a huge mistake and I booked an Airbnb that what wasn't quite big enough um, which wasn't really the biggest problem. The biggest problem was I booked it on Mission Beach, which on a Saturday night, there's absolutely no parking. So that was a whole shebang. We ended up getting a new Airbnb, which is this one you see here, which has a fabulous view of the sunset. So the sunset is worth it to me. So thank you, Blue Gay, for getting us this Airbnb. Better thank her for getting us those. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. <laughs> My children work twice as hard to get this Airbnb. Airbnb exactly. Too. Hey, I have been batting a thousand lately on my ads. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like no call I haven't had any like redos. Oh yes. Uh huh. Hundred percent. My favorite is Luke busting out the window with the sword. Oh, that was the best. Yeah. <laughs> Hands down. So when we get an advertisement for our channel, which as you guys have been seeing in our channel, we'll do like a 60 to 90 second advertisement for our product or a company. Um, kind of like if you watch TV, there's commercials. Um, so it helps out us because they pay us and we help out them because we promote them. But sometimes we'll have to film the ad and since we're outdoor YouTubers, like we're kind of all over the place and we have to film it, edit it, and then send it to Matilda. And then she kind of looks over it and then she'll send it to the company and then sometimes the company wants something changed so in the beginning we were going back and forth a lot because we were kind of new to the whole ad thing and like you know what they wanted the talking points and everything like that well i could barely read to begin with <laughs> <laughs> that, that is not that is not a false statement wait wait i have a video in my phone it's vertical but you were saying hold on what, what testosterone was okay no i didn't film that one it was Oh, uh, consultation. Consultation. You kept saying something else. Consolation. Consolation, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, there's, a, I'm not going to name names here, but there's actually a car auto YouTuber I was really interested in. And uh, I reached out about doing deals and legitimately, the, I mean, he didn't say this, but the response was, he doesn't know how to read. He won't, he won't take, because I was like, I wonder why he doesn't do 
sponsorship integrations, but yeah. he, he legitimately couldn't read or wouldn't read, and so... Wow. Uh, <laughs> he Is he in the U.S.? <laughs> yeah. Huh. And he's a YouTuber. Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. My problem is, is I can read perfectly fine, and I can read to myself perfectly fine. Uh -huh. It's when I as have to read out loud. Yeah. Oh no! Well, the fish is falling apart. That's technically a good sign. There we go. But that's probably something so many people have been interested in hearing about too, is these ads There's and like. Random well, ads. But everybody like out. I've had comments, negative comments about yeah. the ads. Well, look at Michael Jordan. You think he got as wealthy as he did by playing basketball? Yeah. Or by having Air Jordans. Oh, nice. And I, I'll give it to you guys that you guys only promote brands that you actually like. I yeah. have other clients who just anything and everything they'll go for. And yeah. I mean, obviously from a monetary perspective, sometimes it can be great, but I really admire the clients who only take the deals that they actually yeah. like the brand. You want to hear the funniest story ever and this is going to make you die laughing. So after the testosterone ad, <laughs> listen, you're about to die. My mom calls me when oh, she watched the oh video. She God. goes, Gabriel, oh you are too young to need testosterone right now. <laughs> I'm like, mom, stay out of my business. The funniest part about that is, so if y'all know Joey VT, shout out Joey VT. We enjoy making fun of Gabe, Gabe because he says, testosterone and we're like how, like how do you even say testosterone it's like not like that was the ad that i threw the biggest fit about i hate to tell yes, you yeah. joey was there i was so mad so we're like why does gabe say testosterone and he really couldn't get it out um and then gabe's mom comes over and we were like me and joey were like all right so betty what is the like hormone in a man's body and she goes testosterone and me and Joey just die laughing I'm like there it is I guess there it is oh, I God. was so mad at that ad because I would say it and then I would need to say it on camera and I literally I stormed around my house yelling throwing a fit about it <laughs> now I can get it out pretty well testosterone testosterone <laughs> testosterone <laughs> He says testosterone. Tes no, yeah, testosterone. testosterone. I don't know. <laughs> All sorts of different versions. Just drink a Mountain Dew and you'll be good. <laughs> so bad. Alright you guys, we're going to finish up cooking this fish. We're going to sit down at the table, give each and every one's opinions on this calico bass, and we'll see you all at the table. We're down at the table. The fish is cooked and now we are all going to try it. Is this the taste test? This all is together. the taste test. This all is the together. official okay. taste test all together. Do we put sauce on it? Nope. Okay. Just the fish itself. Then Hopefully you can it put sees sauce all of us. Okay. But you have some rice on yours. Oh okay. yeah, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's allowed. <laughs> yeah, you're allowed to do that. Okay. I gotta get her to Florida. So she's California raised <laughs> and California bred. I need to get her to the swamps with us to eat some like nutri rat, like <laughs> Some interesting things. I think Jiggin would Some be on the that stuff. too. You combine me, Kelly, and Jiggin, and you're our guest. Oh my god, that would be <laughs> that fun. would be funny. That would be hilarious. We would torture poor Matilda. <laughs> yeah, underwater rats. <laughs> okay, All right. Let's see. I I know I can compare this to the fit. Hold on, I know what fish I can compare this to. Mmm, it's, it's really delicious. Good. Yeah, it's so good. It tastes like really good cod. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Oh, you cheated because you had some sauce. Yeah, but I'm allowed to. <laughs> Gabe's a sauce guy. I'm not a sauce person. Like, growing up, I didn't even eat dressing on my salad. Oh, like, that's messed but up. But I don't yeah. eat these green things <laughs> she put on my rice either. I know, I sprinkled green them. Green beans, those are scallions, <laughs> not <laughs> green beans. No, I said green, green things. things. Oh. <laughs> these green I, things. I know, I put them on there, and then once I, like, dropped them, I was like, Oops. But I'm like, you know what? Blue Game makes me eat stuff I do not want to eat. One, a bunch of fried stuff, and two, squirrel tail. Oh. Yeah, I do recall Yikes. that. She yeah. had to take the squirrel tail for the team. <laughs> there was yeah. one thing, though, that I cooked that you and, just refused. No, and you wouldn't even eat my fish soup either. Oh, I got can't a lot do of hate that. For I that. would throw up. No, you got hate for that. I can't do it. Yeah, it's really good. good. That's a really good fish. Mm-hmm. I would definitely shoot more of these. And they were super easy, honestly. 
Um, some of them were like under ledges in the rocks, but this one I shot, as you guys see in the video, I jumped in. Actually, the first one I missed, I jumped in, dove down, and one like swam up and looked at me, and I'm like, is he 14 inches? Is he 14 inches? I'm like, yeah, he's probably like 15 inches. And I was like, boom, just swing a shot, and he just turned last minute, and I missed him. This one, Chris actually dove down, and when he dove back, or when he swam back up to the surface, fish get really curious, and sometimes they'll follow the diver to the surface. And this is what this calico bass did. He oh, like swam, followed Chris up, and I was like, booyah. And it was like a nice size one, and I was like, Phew, shot him. Chris was such a cool dude. Our whole team, Chris, Cole, Austin, Chris. CJ. CJ was crazy professional. Captain Mad, Mad Max. Max. Shout out Mad Max, Austin, and CJ for this trip. It was absolutely incredible. Like Gabe said, the best crew. And sometimes, you know, we go out and we travel. You have no idea who you're getting involved with or even what you're getting involved with. Um, but we get super lucky this trip. I mean... The whole, like, never was there one moment where I was like, oh, it could be better or wish he wasn't here. Nope. Maybe they wish I was. I think that whole. Oh no, they definitely wish you weren't there. <laughs> when I shot, when I shot the big sheep's head, they might have wished yeah. I wasn't there. Oh, uh, CJ, this is so good. What is? Is this from the restaurant you guys went to? Mm -mm. That's from. Uh, I think it's from Hawaii. Hawaii. Oh, yeah. you brought it all the way from Hawaii? No, I bought it in the store. Here. Oh. Okay. So sense. in Florida, they don't sell this Japanese barbecue sauce, but uh, Justin Lee, he's a crazy sparrow in Hawaii. He posts this on his Instagram, and I'm like. That looks really good. And he actually got this company, I don't know what it's called, Japanese barbecue sauce, ba, ba Chans, I think has a little octopus on it. And they sent us some. And then Gabe and I just used that in like, for a strip of videos when we were cooking, cause it's so good. You it's can- so good. Yeah, you can use this on fish, vegetables, Chicken steak, wings, fried chicken, chicken wings, wings, the bomb. Everything, mm. it's so good. All right, you guys, we're wrapping up this video. We're going to go ahead and finish our drinks and our dinner here and talk with beautiful Matilda, which is, it's, it's just so crazy to see you at, like, in person. I know, same with you guys. Like, We've never seen each other. I'm, like, it's weird to say I met you because I've, like, I've known you yeah, forever. We, yeah. like, send her video, which is weird because we don't really see videos of you. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you, you normally Zoom call a lot of people, don't you? Yeah. I, well, you never Zoom asked to Zoom call me. <laughs> you probably don't want to see it. <laughs> you want to know how to. <laughs> I hate Zoom calls, honestly. Like, any type of video chats or Zoom calls. What? Did that? Oh, no, it didn't. We're good. The screen just went black. <laughs> I had to Zoom call the YouTube people one time. Oh, oh, yes. And we, really yeah, yeah I, I saw them, yeah. That didn't mm -hmm. help us at all either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright you guys, so calico bass is a thumbs up. It's a delicious fish. There's absolutely no fishy flavor whatsoever. Yeah, that's true. Close up shot, super tender, and there's super big striations, kind of like a tilefish. Um, I think the flavor resembles like a really good cold water cod from my cod eating days back in bodybuilding. I ate cod like every single day for like six weeks, so. Anyways, this video is ending. Thank you for watching. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thumbs up, check out Blue Gabe channel and Mad Max out here in San Diego. Hit up CJ on Instagram. I'll put all the information that you guys need to know in the link below this video if you guys want to come out to San Diego and shoot bluefin tuna. So thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time. See ya.